Hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. Have your garden skills improved during quarantine? They sure have. I planted myself on the couch at the beginning of March, and I've grown significantly since. <laughs> I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular, and lots of our friends and family are picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting. We think it's kind of funny because we're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. Yeah. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong, where we share our most epic garden failures and our biggest garden lessons. Upside Down Tulips. Well, hey, everybody. Hi. Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. And welcome to the very first podcast of our lives. Our lives? <laughs> our entire lives. That's right. Yeah, it is. The first podcast of our entire lives. We're baby podcasters. Uh-huh. And this is Upside Down Tulips, which is our gardening podcast that's going to celebrate the failures of the garden. Yeah. Uh, I, I've had a few. Um in fact, uh, that's kind of how we started talking about this whole thing, right? Right. We were, it was the end of March and we had both been in quarantine. We were unemployed and you came over to my uh, social distanced backyard patio. Uh-huh. And we started talking about all the time we were spending in our gardens because we yeah. had nothing else to do. Yeah. Yes, you know, looking around, there's not that much you can plant in March, but, you know, you can go out there and feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, I was, a, yeah. I, was into, I was up to my ears in gardening. That's all I wanted to do because yeah. it helped me forget about all the craziness of the world. Yeah, yeah, me too. I had decided this was going to be the best garden I ever, ever had. I, I agree. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. Because then everybody started asking us for advice. Yeah, which, which, you know, we, I don't know everything. I don't, I mean, no. Yeah, everything I have learned about gardening has been about, from all the mistakes I've made. Yeah, me too. And I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah, and, and I think failure gets a bad rap. Failure does get a bad rap. I mean, what's the whole thing about you have to take a risk? And really, if you do something wrong in the garden, what's the worst that happens? You replant. <laughs> Right? right? Yeah. And it's you, not brain surgery. It's not brain surgery. People aren't going to die. No. Nobody dies. Nobody even gets wounded. Well, unless, you know, you step on a hoe and it comes and hits you in the middle of the eyes. But don't leave your hose face up on the ground. That's a good mistake to learn from. That's a really... I've done that, Christy. I've oh, done I've that. done that. Have you really? Yeah. It's like out of those... Um, it's out of a cartoon, isn't it? Exactly. Or the rake. You yeah, know, I've stepped yeah. on a rake and it just hit me in the head. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Me and the too. only thing I'm glad about is that nobody had a video camera when I did it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I think we really kind of bonded over this. I mean, we both work in theater, but that doesn't mean we work together on any shows, right? Because there's a lot of theater here. Uh, yes, that's right. Here in the Denver metro area. In the Denver metro there's area. There's a lot of theater. And of mm -hmm. course, there's no theater happening now. No. All the theaters are closed no. up, but I have, um, I, even before I knew we were neighbors, I was a fan of yours. Oh, what a nice thing to say. And I'm not lying if I say I'd heard about you and was becoming a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to repeat exactly what you said. Yeah, I understand what, you what said, you're saying. You know? And I think the first time I remember hearing about you, Edith, is that I was at a new play festival, and I think for, and you were one of the judges. They called, I was so embarrassed, they called us luminaries. You were, you are, you know, you were luminescent. Was I luminescent? You still really? are luminescent. Am I? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, somebody, I was talking about you, and somebody says, oh, I think she lives by you, Christy. And I said, where? And I went, oh my gosh, you live like two blocks away from me. Yeah. And I remember, we also kind of bonded over our love of gardening. Oh yeah, we did. We did indeed. I mean, I, uh, you know, people, uh, I don't think people really at a, for a long time realized that you could do these things. That They just put up the lawn. A lawn is not the way to go, in my opinion, just in my opinion. When you can have, when you can, can go out into your backyard and pick raspberries or peaches or zucchini 
there's just nothing better. And it's, you know, a lot of work, but beautiful work, wonderful work, yeah. right? It always interests me that people will say that so much work. I find, I think it's my therapy. You know, so I'll be out in my real life making theater and directing plays. And I find there's something about what I learn about gardening teaches me about life, teaches me about art. And I just think time goes away. I like all the things about gardening. I even like weeding. I love weeding because I'm often victorious. <laughs> and if I'm not victorious, I'm relentless. I will go back to that weed. I don't know. For years, you know how some of them have a tap root that seems yeah. to go down to China? Well, I, I like weeding very much. Yeah, if I don't get a weed right away, I'll just, if I, you know, if you don't, when you get a weed and you get that satisfying pop, oh, the I whole love thing pop. comes oh, up. Yeah, yeah. But then you get that other sound, which is that sort of like, yes, that it, crappy sound. That crappy sound that means you broke the root and it's coming back to yeah. get you. I yeah. always say, well, I'll see you again in a couple months. Yep. <laughs> or if it rains, I'll see you next week. Oh, right. That's right? true too. How they yeah. love the rain. I also found that Gardeners are people who have long ago realized nature's in charge. And gardeners are people who have the patience to wait for things. They don't rush things. It's, it's so unlike our modern hyper tech, techno society. And it links us, I think, to thousands and thousands and thousands of years back to people that have done this for eons. There's a neat connection to that, isn't there? Yeah. Um, and you're right about patience. Yeah. And I think that's where mistakes and failure come in, is that we learn things. I think the biggest things I've learned about life have been through my failures. Me too. Absolutely. <laughs> there have been so many. <laughs> Hello. You know, that person you dated or that job that you had or uh -huh. that relationship or Casti that choice. Oh, casting the wrong actor for a role. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, learn, we learn a lot from mistakes. And I think um, it helps me to know that because of a gardening mistake, um, it's not the end of the world. Right. Yeah, so I'm excited right. about our journey on our first podcast. Me too. And I want to tell you, my when I come to your house, when I walk over here or drive by or anything, the every single border and boundary you have has the most exquisite flowers. Oh, it, it the colors. I mean, literally different parts of your property here, and it's not like gigantic, but there's so many different gardens within the property. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like like Monet's paintings. Oh, I just love come walking around and seeing what you've got going on. Oh, thanks. I admire your garden because I just think I love what you've done to your backyard. Oh, and how it's just your entire backyard is all vegetables. All and vegetables fruit. and fruit, Fruits, yeah, yes, yeah, and it's you know it's small. It's a small little city backyard, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have some. I also have. I like how I have things from in in my yard that are from your yard, and I have things like the daisies you gave me. Oh, are doing great. Are they do oh, good. So is the fever few. Oh, good. Yep. I have. I love your hens and chicks mm -hmm. that I've been kind of propagating and. I've been making little art projects out of them and making patterns out of your hens and chicks. You know, at some point we have to do a whole podcast about how you can propagate, how you can share what you have so you don't have to run and buy every seed. Yes. And every seed, but you just, it, it's all here. Oh, let's put that sharing. on the list of things to talk about. Yeah. And you know, folks that, you know, friends that are listening in, we went through, we sat around and talked about all the things, the topics that we could talk about. And we have topics for a whole year. Yeah, of things that we can talk about from our mistakes that we can share with you to help you and your gardens get better. And there's a lot of things that are universal, universal about uh, gardening. But specifically, our situation is that we are, we're a mile high and we're very dry. Yes, we are. Uh, 5,280 feet high mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Yeah. It, which is a suburb of the Denver metro area in the beautiful state of Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have unique gardening aspects to us, which I think is a, which is great for the whole country because mm -hmm. we have to deal with a lot of challenges. So and, if you're new to Colorado and you're gardening, you'll want to know how to amend your soil because it's going to be very full of clay. 
Or really sandy. Or really sandy. I have pots in my yard that are part clay, and then right next door, it'll all be sand. Do you have that in your <laughs> yard at all? Well, well, at this point, after living in my house for, I think, 22 years, I think I've amended every inch of that soil. Wow. Every inch. So, yeah, but it used to, it was hard. It took a long time. Yeah. Patience again. Patience. Patience and learning from mistakes. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. And we have to deal with things like very dry climate here. Yeah. Yeah. Water is a precious commodity. And the word, and hail. We just had hail last week. We had, mm-hmm. And maybe the worst thing is a 60-degree temperature change yeah. overnight. Boy, did we get socked this year. Oh, it was rough. 2020, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. Know. Right. I know, because first we had that, we had a freeze in October, which wiped everything out, mm-hmm. a hard freeze, and then uh-huh. we had snow, in, a hard freeze in yeah. April. Yeah. That was the one. That was the one that killed. Unfair. There's not going to be an apple in in Denver anywhere. What about peaches? My peaches, no, Ugh. no blossoms. They were they were decimated. Ah. So anyway, you have to roll with the punches, though. You have to. Yeah. Okay, that's the way it is. You can't sit around and mope. Yeah. Well, not for long. It's not useful. <laughs> right. And I thought I was going to lose all my roses because of that freeze, and I had beautiful roses this year. Oh, good. Good. So good. That turned out okay. So probably we should probably take a a little break and then we're going to talk about our top five gardening mistakes. You all want to stick around for that. Okay. Upside down to Hi everybody, we're back. And now we're going to talk about our topic of the week, which is our top five favorite gardening mistakes. Of all time. Of all time. Da, 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 da. And, uh, um, and Edith, do you want to you, you want to say what your number five is? And we'll work. We'll both we'll, we'll we'll work our way to number one. Okay, it'll be dramatic. You're dramatic like that, Christy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> so, um, my number five is, and this is like a warning. Okay, do not plant carrots on a windy day. So I had. <laughs> In my hand, I had all these carrot seeds, which if you've ever planted carrots, weigh, I don't know, a micro millimeter of an ounce or something. They're so tiny. They're so tiny. And they're light. They don't weigh anything. Yeah. They actually have anti-gravity. They actually weigh less than. Yeah. So this wind comes up and blows all the seeds out of my hand. Oh, Christy, no. Christy, I had carrots coming up under the <laughs> clothesline, <laughs> oh, sidewalk no. cracks. I had them everywhere oh no and of course they couldn't grow yeah they're unhappy they're so unhappy and gnarly and it was like you know looking at me the whole entire summer (laughs) so now how do you plant your carrots now i plant them when it's not windy not windy it has to be calm Uh i only put a little bit in i don't put a whole bunch in the palm of my hand and then i pinch a couple between my fingers and i very carefully I have already, you know, made a little ridge in the garden of like yeah. a quarter of an inch, and I very carefully put them in. That's smart. I've done that before too. I have spilled seeds, yeah, all over the place, mm. and then there you go. There you go. I'm actually growing carrots for the first time in a long time. Oh, really? I tried growing carrots maybe like first time I had a vegetable garden. I grew carrots. This is maybe 20 years ago, and they were just a miserable experience for me. My soil was too thick. They, yeah, they got they were just stubby. But I got a new little carrot. That's a tiny, it's a little baby carrot. Oh, a, the little finger. Yes. Some of them are called little, and you can also get half longs, uh, which are perfect if you have this kind of soil we have here. Yeah. So I think we'll see how they do it. I didn't thin them out really well, so. Yeah. They're hard to thin out. It's so true. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, I planted like a thousand and I think only five came up, so <laughs> I should have thrown them to the wind and done the windy day thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Okay. All right. Okay, well, here's my number five, which is actually, I got to say, doing this list was really hard because I kept thinking, I have so many gardening mistakes I could celebrate right now that it's hard to pick what would be your top five. Yeah. So this one may seem kind of weird, Edith. Okay. Because it's my the latest thing I learned, my latest all-time favorite gardening mistake. Okay. Which is um, not stretching. Stretching your body? Yeah. So 
gardening in the past couple years, I would oh. go out there and I would be gardening and I would just get so sore. Oh. My back would be sore, my butt would be sore, my hips, my knees, my feet. And I was out there. The next day, I couldn't go out again the next day. I would just be so sore. I think especially it's like the more trips around the sun you have, the more you realize how important is stretching. Well, because of the pandemic, um, I started doing more yoga at home. And I started doing it three days a week. Last week, I did it four days a week. And I can go out now and I can get on my knees. I can bend over mm. and my my feet aren't sore. It was really, I was just getting in pain in gardening and it just was taking away some of the fun of it. Oh my. Oh, Christy, that's so. really good. But you know what I thought you meant when you said stretching? <laughs> I thought you meant you were going to say, don't plant anything where you have to stretch to reach it. Ah. And I was like, but Christy... You almost always have to stretch. All that moving, right? Yeah. Getting up, getting down. It used to be that, you know, I would do a lot of things. Like once I got on, once I got down on the ground, boy, I didn't want to get back up. It was like the getting up and the getting down. But yeah. now I know I do so many downward dogs and you're like up and down and stretching and all the stuff and warrior poses that uh, I well, just. So that's my, that's, oh, it's kind of a weird one for number five. But my number five gardening mistake is not stretching. And so. I just, if you're out there and you're gardening and you think like, I can't do that because my back hurts or my knees hurt or, you know, I just encourage you, go, you can get this for free right now at home. You can go on your computer and look up free yoga classes or, and just, and I don't, you know, the guy who does the yoga class that I take, it's just on TV and he will, he's terrible. Um, I mean, I'm not, he's terrible. He's so good. He does all these poses that I can't do and I just adapt them for myself. But. Okay. All right. So we're on number four. Okay. Well, number four would be, um, I, I I read where if you bury plastic milk jugs, you, you put pin, you, you, you put little holes on the bottom and then you bury them with just the spout sticking out of the soil and it's a way to deep water trees and stuff. Yes. I remember you used to do that. Yeah. Well, it's hateful. It's a hateful <laughs> thing to do. Here's what happens. I mean, somehow the weight of the earth itself crushes the plastic. Oh, no. It's flimsy, you know? <gasps> crushes this plastic thing, and then it fills up with mud because this thing is sticking out. So now you've got a backyard full of stupid plastic milk jugs. Oh, my gosh. Some of which you trip over, so I consider that a huge mistake. Oh, my gosh. And, folks, if anybody of you has done that, will you please write in and let us know? Because we want to hear what, what if you've done that, too. Please you don't let me be the only one. You can't one. be the only one, please. Edith. Please. Okay. Oh, that's good. Good. Okay. Uh, how long did it take you to get those out? Oh, there's still some of them in oh there. Gosh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My number four is a vegetable garden one. Mm-hmm. Um, my number four is my biggest gardening mistake <laughs> is a fear of harvesting. Oh, when I first started vegetable gardening, I had an irrational fear of harvesting the plants, <laughs> the vegetables that I grew because I wouldn't know. I was like, is this the right time to pluck it or not? Is this oh. the time? Is that the time? And, and I used, and at one time I used to grow corn because I think that's what you should do. You should always grow corn. I'd be out there like, is this, should I harvest the corn now or not? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait another. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then I come out the next day and the squirrels got it. Or oh, I'd be out there and I'd be like, yes. I'm growing broccoli. And I'm like, oh, it, you know, it doesn't look like it does in the store. So is this right? I'm afraid. I'm not going right. to harvest it. I'm not going to harvest it. And then I'd go out the next day and there'd be flowers all over it. Yes. Or you had a 10-foot zucchini because you're yes. just really afraid. Is this big enough? No. It can get bigger. Sure. Is this how it's supposed to be? <laughs> Right. Or I had this patch of garlic that was out there that just kind of came with the house and I was never harvesting it at all. I didn't know what to do with it. And finally, just recently, I started like, I'm going to start harvesting my own garlic. Mm -hmm. So today, when I was out in the vegetable garden and my broccoli was out there and, um, and I harvested half of it today. Half of the broccoli already? Yeah. Wow. I, I just Excellent. think it was ready. So Excellent. Because you... it'll grow back. I That's mean, right, little baby broccoli. Yeah, it's not like you chopped it and killed it. You I just took it. off some of the broccoli and it'll yeah. grow back. Yeah, and so will you go home with a piece of broccoli today? Mm. Yeah, oh, I'd love to. Okay, oh, good. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. yeah. Okay, good. Sure. Okay, well, um, 
this I think is a very, very common one. When I first started gardening, I, I would buy seedlings from the store, the, the nursery, and then I wouldn't harden them off. It would be from the nursery yeah. into the ground. And the poor little things would go into shock and die. It was mm-hmm. like not sh- awe, shock and awe. It was shock and die, <laughs> shock, awe, die. It was all three. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Big mistake. Never do that again. I think a lot of people do that. I think they do too. I didn't even know what that was until like five years ago. Yeah. Hardening up. Yeah. I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fair to them. No. not Or to you because, you know, everything dies. Yeah. So that's not why we garden. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do that thing because you just want to get in the ground. Yeah. You yeah. want that. You don't want to wait. You, pl- you bought it. You have it. You want to get it in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Christy, I'm... Bated breath. Okay, here's my number three. My number three is a flower one, mm-hmm. and it is about um, hydrangeas. Okay. Now, in I grew up in Minnesota, and I loved hydrangeas. They're just the most beautiful plant and most beautiful flower. And we moved out to Colorado 20 years ago and had this nice little house where I could finally have a garden, and I proudly bought a hydrangea, and I planted it, and it quickly died. And then the next year, I went out and I bought a hydrangea and I planted it and then it died. Uh Uh-oh. I see a pattern forming. (laughs) It's not good. And it's expensive. The third year, I thought, okay, I'm going to buy, I'm not buying the right kind of hydrangea. And I bought a hydrangea and from very reputable nurseries, really lovely. And I bought it and I thought one just went specially for Colorado and it died. Oh, and so, wait a minute. I'm going to have to stop you there because that's a good dramatic point to stop because we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll hear about the fourth hydrangea. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you about the fourth hydrangea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Upside Down Tulips is sponsored by Bindweed Single Service. Are you looking for that special person for a forever relationship? Maybe someone who shares your love of gardening. Find your special person at Bindweed Single Service. We'll find your match. We guarantee the roots of your love will grow deeper with time and that the ties at Bind will grow stronger every year. You'll never be alone again at Bindweed Single Service. We're back and we're all waiting to hear about Christy's hydrangeas. Christy? The ones that that never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just was throwing away a lot of money. And I think ultimately... The gardening mistake about this was not really the hydrangea's fault. I think it is ultimately a uh, wrong plant fault. Like, I think I bought the wrong plant for this area. But you bought it here. Yeah, maybe it was. Yeah. Or it's a it's a bad watering story. Oh, okay. Because if you go to a good nursery, they often will... Not sell you things that don't grow here. I mean, if you right. go to a big box, I don't think they care as much. That's true. But if you go to a nursery. Yes. Uh, and you can actually I, talk totally to It is totally my people. fault. I don't think, I think ultimately it was a watering. And I think I realized that I didn't want to have a garden that I needed to water that heavily. Oh. So I don't think I watered it enough. So my fourth hydrangea is actually, I bought a silk plant yeah. and it's in my bedroom. <laughs> So I really Aww. love hydrangeas, but I just don't want to, I guess I just don't want to water that much. So I guess the mistake here is just be careful about what plant you're purchasing. Mm-hmm. Make sure that it's right for your area. And Good. also that do you want to water it enough? Do you have water supply right by it? Yeah. Uh, so you're not throwing away money on beautifully made plants that you're not going to That's take really care of. good. Now, Chrissy, I don't want you to feel bad though. I mean, you know what the I Ching says, right? What? No blame. Oh, no. Nice. The I Ching says that all the time. They go through these long parables Aww, and they end it with... I'm going to cry, Edith. No blame. It's beautiful. Oh, well, my That's gosh. what this is about. Because I murdered from... those hydrangeas. <laughs> I killed them. <laughs> I'm going to change the subject before Christy totally loses <laughs> Can I have a Kleenex, please? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of the opposite of a killing story. This is, when I first moved into my house, They the person before me had uh, Doberman Pinschers, like a, a, a bunch of them. So there was nothing, right? A bunch of Doberman Pinschers? Well, two, but they were big. <laughs> okay, so. I was envisioning like five. Okay, I exaggerate. Okay. And I won't do it again because apparently I'm going to be called on it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I shouldn't exaggerate. Okay, so... Um, 
I wanted something that would grow fast. And I'm a person who goes and I get seeds from the alley. If I see a flower that I like and I see that it has seeds already, I will collect them. And I collected these pretty seeds. Not Well, the seeds weren't pretty. These pretty flowers with these purple, pretty bell-shaped purple flowers all up and down on these tall stalks that grew two, three feet tall. I collected the seeds and I planted them every Christy you oh my god your face you know oh my yeah my, I planted everybody my them. hand is to my my hand is covering my face right now horror because I she think, has a you, I think yeah. I know what Edith is talking about in the front in the back of my house front of my house turns out it's called a creeping bell flower. oh my god I knew it the oh, most Edith. invasive <laughs> no. possible thing oh, that no. you could have because they just don't spread by seeds. Oh, no. They are a double artillery attack. They yeah. have rhizomes. Yes. Good Scrabble word, by the way. Rhizomes under the ground that feed. So they are kind of like the creeping bellflower. Why do they call it creeping when actually it is the most aggressive? It's actually like it's Hitler. It is Hitler. <laughs> and my garden is Poland. And it has totally taken over. I spend three days every spring wow. just trying to control it. You've done a good job because I was just at your yard the other day, uh-huh. and I don't think I saw any. Well, I keep ripping them out, but believe yeah. me, they're everywhere. I had them in, I have them in my yard too. Mm-hmm. And folks, if you're out there and you have creeping bellflower, please write in and tell us your stories about creeping bellflower. I remember the person I bought the house from said, oh, and by the way, over there in this little patch are some wildflowers that grow. Uh huh. And what's interesting too is that when you pull them out, you actually think you got it. Yeah. You yeah. get that nice little sound. Yep. Christy, I have dug, I have dug with a shovel. I've dug yeah. with a shovel. I have found the rhizome, but what I if you leave even the tiny piece yes. of it, it's creeping your, it, it's, impo- it's impossible. But it teaches you humility. It's another example of mm. being humbled by your garden or your gardening mistakes. Yeah, which is not a bad thing. It's not. It's a good. Not thing. a bad thing. It's a good thing. Right. I don't know how, but yeah, sure, it's good. <laughs> and there might be people out there who really love that flower and that's so true and treasure it. You know what? You're right. But not me. You have just broadened <laughs> my perspective. I don't care. Yeah. Broadened. Thank you, Christy, for doing that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, my number two fits in really well with this one. Okay. This is a lawn mistake. Now, the big difference between our gardens is that you don't have a lawn at all. Which no, I got rid of my but lawn. We have, a, we, have, we have a lawn. We're from Minnesota. You have, you know, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a cultural thing where you feel like to have a little lawn. In Minnesota, you can grow a lawn incredibly easy. Really? And in fact, you could even, not, it's not like here, maybe we mow the lawn once a week, maybe uh-huh. once every other week. In uh-huh. Minnesota, in the heat of summer because of the rain and everything, you're mowing it twice a week. Wow. It's very easy to grow a lawn. So we come to Colorado and you find out, oh my gosh, it's kind of tricky to grow a lawn. And so we had this, you know, halfway decent lawn and it was a little thatchy. So I thought, huh, well, I'm going to get one of those companies to come by and do one of those power rakes. So my number two mistake is never power rake your lawn if you have bindweed. <gasps> oh. So folks who don't know, bindweed is actually started off as being a, a Mediterranean um, weed that is from the Morning Glory family. So I yes. have little white or pink flowers has a long vine to it Uh and it actually i did i went down a little rabbit hole on this and found out that it came over from the mediterranean to the united states in the 1700s wow and this vine um can i did not know this at the time can go down nine feet oh no and the seeds have been known to have been a thousand years old and can still germinate wow when the dust bowl happened Bindweed was the only thing that still lived. And its nice purpose was that it fed the cows during the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. But bindweed is vicious. And Mm -hmm. so when the power raker and the dethatcher machine came through, it chopped up all the bindweed that was in the lawn that I didn't know was there. And Edith, did you ever see, remember the movie Sorcerer's Apprentice? Yes. Yes. So when Mickey Mouse was had, um, had gotten the... Uh, the brooms to d- deliver all the water to the mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. and he chopped up, 
He chopped off the broom because... Oh, time's up. No, Edith's phone is ringing. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Do you need to get that, Edith? Do you need to get your call? No, you okay? I don't. No, okay. this is right. way more important. Okay, right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when he chopped, he chopped it all up, and then there were thousands of brooms carrying all the water into the well, and it became this huge problem. So I had bindweed that just chopped oh. it all up, just kind of like your creeping bellflower. It yeah. just went everywhere, and it took me years to get the upper hand on the bind mm-hmm. weed. And I finally, I still have it in my lawn. I still have it in my flower beds. Um, I It has been, and and people out there, man, if you have bind weed stories, oh, man. Uh, tell us your bind weed stories because, oh my gosh. And if you are a new gardener and w- are wondering what is so bad, I mean, it has a flower and everything. The thing is, it will choke your other plants. It will mm-hmm. use up water, and water is a very precious mm-hmm. resource. So mm-hmm. we have to be cruel to the bindweed, right? <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. How do you get rid of your bindweed? Well, you know, I pour boiling water on it. And that works? It worked if you do it a lot. For It took yeah. me a few years. Yeah, pulling works really well. Like if you pull it and pull it and pull it. Because then it doesn't have the leaves to nourish itself. But yeah. it, again, patience. It takes yeah. a long time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I felt bad. I thought when I put boiling water on, maybe I'm boiling a worm, which <gasps> oh, I no. don't. Yeah. So that's not good because worms are great for your garden. Yeah. You don't want to boil your worms. You don't want to boil your worms. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, you know, my my last one is, is actually um, kind of a kind of a one-liner. I, my, uh, first gardening, my biggest gardening mistake was not having enough friends to give zucchini to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're very prolific and I got to make more friends. Yeah, I love that. Have you, uh, my zucchini, I've already gotten like four or five zucchini Me too, me too. I've already gotten, I think, four cucumbers. What? You've got cucumbers? Yes. Yes. Oh, holy crap. My goodness. Yeah. I don't have cucumbers yet. I have flowers. I have wow. cucumbers. You know, I, I stake them high. They're going yeah, high. Yeah. Mine yeah. go high too. Are you staking your zucchini this year? I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to have a hard time. I was looking at it today. Uh, it hasn't, you know how they put out, what do you call it? They, they get long. Yeah. It hasn't gotten long yet. It's still round. Ah. As soon as it gets long, I'm going to put a, I think a ladder in front of it. That's and make it interesting. Climb the ladder. I can't wait. You have to take pictures of that. I will. As you go, as you go through. It could turn out to be a garden failure. We'll see. You know, in Minnesota, um, where we grew up, uh, there was only one reason to lock your car door. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) So that nobody would put zucchini in your back seat. (laughs) That's such a great story. And you know, we have to remember this. I think it's in July. Sometime this month, there's National Leave Zucchini in Your Neighbor's Porch Day. Oh, that's so great. I'm going to put a zucchini in your porch that day. I have to, oh, we have yeah. to look well, up I'm going to grow a gigantic one and put it on your porch. <laughs> the, What's okay. the biggest zucchini you've ever grown? Um, it, uh, I think like this big. How, How big is that for see. our people who can't see? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that this is 20 inches. That's Yeah, that's big. Yeah, you know how they hide. Yeah, they I didn't do. mean to grow it that big. Yeah, they yeah, they hide. Okay, Christy, you have one more. I right? do, I do. My number one favorite gardening mistake of all times is um, when I uh, was a young newlywed and we had just bought our house in Duluth, Minnesota, and I had a little land, you know, little 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 front, little backyard, and I thought I wanted to grow something, and so I planted tulips. And my neighbor next door had this beautiful yard, and they were retired, a very nice retired couple. And, and I was so proud that my, my tulips came up, and then, um, and they bloomed, and then they all fell over. And oh, I know. I asked my neighbor what happened to my tulips, and she said, well, dear, did you plant them upside down? And so my favorite gardening mistake is my first gardening mistake. It's the first thing I ever attempted to do gardening was to plant tulips. I plant them upside down. If you plant, I didn't know there was an upside down or a right side down, but apparently Uh you need to plant them pointy side up Uh and butt side down. Otherwise, it's making the tulip has to grow, starts growing upside down. 
and it has to make a hook to grow up and it weakens the stem and they flop over. And so I never made that mistake again. I always planted them. But you transformed it into the name of this podcast. Ta-da! Ta-da! Gardening! (laughs) Upside down tulips! Uh (laughs) Uh-huh! And so that is why that's my favorite gardening mistake. Um, and I always think I wish I planted more tulips. I always, I, in the spring, I was like, why did I plant more tulips? Mm-hmm. So yeah. this fall, I'm going to plant a lot of tulips. Me too. Me too. You're going to be my inspiration. Yeah. And we'll tell, we'll help our friends who are listening here as we, as uh, how to plant tulips, yeah. right? What are great, learn more mistakes about tulips. But another mistake would be, don't, you need to plant a lot of tulips. Don't, yeah. 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 Good. And that was our top five favorite all-time gardening mistakes. Excellent. Oh, there's many more, but we won't go into any more right now. Upside Down Tulips is sponsored by Farmer McKegg's Eggs. Farmer Ernie McKegg's Eggs are from happy backyard free-ranging chickens. The freshest, biggest eggs you can buy. With prices so low, you have to wonder if the wear and tear on the chicken's butt is worth it. Find Farmer McKegg's eggs anywhere eggs are sold. He has a really big backyard. Okay, folks. So that was our top five favorite gardening mistakes. There was ten in all because there's two of us. Oh, good point. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Math. Yes. Not yours. Not Not my suit. Oh, we've proven that. (laughs) And we want to hear your favorite gardening mistakes huh and so we encourage you to write to us at our website upside down tulips.com and we actually have uh some people who already wrote in with their gardening mistakes right well okay uh since this is our first podcast it wasn't like they wrote in without us asking them we ask them to Right, they were, just for yes. transparency. They, they, we solicited them. We solicited them <laughs> and were amazed and amused by the yeah, number good. of mistakes. Yeah. Funny mistakes and the funny attitude people had toward them. Like, for example, listen to this. This is from Uta, who lives in Centerville, Virginia. Quote, a mistake I made when putting in raised beds. I put thick landscape fabric on the bottom to control the grass I was covering. Oh, yeah. The carrots I tried to grow that year were fat, stunted, and not very tasty. They all came out looking like old trousers. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. Oh, Una. that is so good. Oh, I know that landscape fabric. I've done that before. Have you done that? Have you had? No, I never have. Yeah. In fact, there's a there's a spot in my yard to this day that I never put in. But it's it, it's in the in the back corner where my roses are that still has that landscape fabric and it won't I can't rip it. What up. is that? Is that for controlling weeds? Yeah, but then oh. the weeds no, you know, weeds find a way. Yeah, they do. Yeah, landscape. Hey, friends, have you done that? Has anybody done that? Put landscape fabric down. That's a common, yeah, gardening mistake. Aw, okay. Yeah. Well, I have a really good one too. This okay. is from Gretchen from the great state of Colorado. She says, the biggest mistake flower-wise was not loosening up the already root-bound plants before I planted them. I need to learn that they're more hardy than I give them credit for. You can be delicately rough with the roots prior to planting so the roots are able to spread. Oh, I love that. Love that. (laughs) Delicately rough. Delicately rough. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to try that on my, I don't know, pets. Yeah. (laughs) You do have to be. You do have to um, open up yes. those roots, though. I've, yes. I I had to learn that too. You think like, yeah. You just can't. I think I know what she means. You yeah. can't take the root ball and bash it against the wall. That's just rough. You can't just like tweeze them out. That's just delicate. You have to be <laughs> delicately rough. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. open it up. Otherwise, what happens is that the roots just keep going in that little circle. Yes. And they go yeah. crazy. They, they go, go insane. Crazy. And they get mad. And you don't want mad roots. No. No. Not a good thing. So please write in because we love your mistakes because they make us feel better about our own. Right, Christy? That's right. Let's bond together. Yeah. (laughs) Excellent. We would like to leave you with an inspiring quote. Here it is. It is by Marcus Tullius Cicero. And it is, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Isn't that nice? I do love that. I love that too. 
You do have everything you need. Yeah. If you really think about it, yeah. Hey, guess what, Edith? Yeah, what? Can you believe we just, that's it, that's our first Upside Down Tulips podcast. Well, wow. That was okay. awesome. That was awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on our podcast. We're assuming you're there. I mean, we can't see you. Let's pretend there's a bunch of people there. And I I'm, do. I yes. feel it. I can yeah. practically hear them applauding. That's right. I feel yeah. it. I feel it, too. I feel it, too. Um, hey, and send us your gardening mistakes, friends. Uh, send us your favorite gardening mistakes. Uh, and uh, also send us uh, what you, how you uh, plant your carrots and what do you do about bindweed and mm-hmm. creeping bellflower. And I'm sure you know things that we don't even know exist. So those things as well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like ghosts? No, Christy. <laughs> I'm sure there are garden hacks oh, out there. Garden yes. hacks. Yes. That, that they know <laughs> that we ghosts. <laughs> and um and and you can go to our, our website at upside down tulips.com and learn more about that. Excellent. And please like and subscribe and make some nice comments about our podcast, please. Tell your friends. Or if you want to be snooty, you can do that too. But remember we have a delete button. That's right. All right. And visit our Facebook page. Please. That's right. And I should we also say special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. We love it. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, the garden will always forgive you. Goodbye. Bye. Upside Down.